when it get dark to the world that is when our light shines what are we a christian for why are we why are we christians to show forth the light when the whole world is saying there is hopelessness we will tell them there is hope when the world is being ravaged by disease we say there is a balm in gilead we serve a god that heals we serve a god that transforms i don't take <laughs> my direction from Europe or from America, they need God. If Africa fail in the place of God, the world will collapse. Africa is the hope of the world because we have terrific men of God here in the soil of Nigeria. We are the leading light. <laughs> clap if you want to clap. The moment we allow the world to take the lead, we are finished. We are to give them hope. We are the hope bearers. And I'm glad you came. Nothing will go wrong with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. This is the month of the Holy Ghost. I welcome you to the service of the Holy Spirit. We are looking at the benefits of the Holy Ghost part four. We look at it. We began Wednesday. We look at it on Friday all night. For service, we looked at it, what the benefits of the Holy Spirit is. And in the first service, we looked at about four benefits of the Holy Spirit. We said, number one benefit, it empowers us to create. Am I right? The Holy Spirit has the ministry to creation. We also said, number two, it gives us ministry to the unbelievers. And that is a ministry of conviction. That whenever we speak to unbelievers, they'll be convicted by the power of the holy spirit number three we said that is the ministry he has a ministry to the believer which is a ministry of what transformation he's an agent in charge your agency in charge of what changing people transformation we said also that the process the name given to the process that makes you look like christ is called what transformation we also say that in the ministry of transformation, the Holy Spirit has a ministry of empowerment to empower us for greater accomplishment. In this service, number five, the Holy Spirit releases you as fire purifying scent. One of the benefits of the Holy Spirit is to release you as a fire purifying scent. Luke chapter 3 verse 15 to 16. Fire purifying scent. Anyone in touch with the Holy Ghost will be purified. And as the people were in expectation, and all men muse in their hearts of John, in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not. Verse sixteen. John answered, saying unto them, "I indeed baptize you with water." But one mightier than I comment, the legend of the legend of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with what? And fire. Who are those who are purifying saints? Those who are purifying saints are those. Whom the Holy Ghost fire rest upon. They are those whose sinful habits has been purged by fire. They are those whom the Holy Ghost separates from ancestral yoke by the anointing. Number one, they are those whose sinful habits have been purged by fire. Number two, they are those who have been separated from ancestral yoke by the anointing. Number three, they are those they are those people whose tongue manifests supernatural refinement. Supernatural refinement. Their tongue have been refined. Their tongue have been purged. Who are those purifying saints? They are those who godly lifestyle 
have become a generational leading light. Those whom lifestyle have become a generational leading light. Who are those purifying saints? Those whom the Holy Spirit has sanctified and their lifestyle have changed, their thinkings have changed, and their behavior have changed. You said you have Holy Ghost and coronavirus is in town. How has the Holy Ghost changed your thinking? How has the Holy Ghost changed your lifestyle? What is your reaction in the midst of darkness? It's a sign whether you are a purifying saint or not. Please, I beg you. You were a lesbian when the purifying fire of the Holy Ghost came upon you. How well has it changed you? You were given to masturbation. How well has this Holy Ghost purified you? You are given to lying. How well has this Holy Ghost purified you? You are a wife bitter. Ten years after being in church, are you still a wife bitter? How well has the Holy Spirit purified you? Hear me, sir. Today is another day. May this fire purify you in the name of Jesus. When this, purif when this fire of the Holy Ghost comes on you, it purifies you of habits, purifies you of lifestyles, purifies you of behaviors, purifies you on, on your character. How does this fire purifies us? By setting the scripture in you on fire. The scriptures you have inside you is set on fire. Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 29. Is not my word as fire. And like hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, sir, it sets the scripture in you on fire. You become scripturally loaded. The word of God becomes a burning coal inside your bones. Hebrew 4.12 The word of God is quick and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joint and of the marrows is the designer of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. When the Holy Ghost comes as a purifier, when he purifies you as a saint, the word of God inside you is set on fire. I. When the, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you to purify you, sir, it gives you an unforgettable visitations. Unforgettable visitations. Visitations, you will say, 1996, I encountered the Holy Ghost. This is what he said to me. That's why you find it easy to hear people like Bishop Oye Depo will say, 1981, I got the vision. The 2000. Papa I always say. In my living room. I had the visitations. Every purifying saint. Have a landmarks. Of the visitations of the Holy Ghost. That are unforgettable. The day he revived you. Unto titans. You don't forget that day. The day your language changes. You don't forget that day. 26 October 1986 he touched my tongues with the coals of fire. I spoke in many languages 1986 on the 26th of October. I will never forget that day. The, the, the voice of the Holy Ghost was to, I spoke in tongues almost three days non-stop. It was an unforgettable encounter. I spoke in tongues on the third day, I spoke like people who have been in the faith for 30 years. 
I won't forget that day. My tongue was set on fire. When this purifying fire comes on you, there is a transfiguration mountain encounters. Transfiguration mountain experience. Where you will say like Peter, we have built three tabernacles here. One for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for Jesus. A connectivity, a synergy of the moves. Moses for the law, Elijah for the prophet, and Jesus for grace. Let's connect it. The Bible said, well, they were awake on that mountain of transfiguration. They saw his glory. As he prayed, the countenance of his face was altered. Luke chapter 9 and verse 29. The countenances of his face was altered. The, 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 the futures of his glory became mighty. When you see this glory I'm talking about, you cry out of sin. You cry out to cry out of sin. You cry out to cry out of sin. Like, a, like Isaiah, you will say, Woe is me, for I am undone. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of unclean people. Today, my eyes have seen the glory. When this purifying fire enters you, you begin to command yoke-breaking anointing. Yoke-breaking anointing. Yoke breaking anointing. Anywhere you enter, you break yoke. Yoke of sickness. Yoke of oppression. You see oppression, you are, you are restless until it is broken. You see sick people, you can't leave. I go to hospital to pray for person. I end up praying for everybody in that world. I end up entering from ward to ward. Because there is a vexation in my spirit to break the yoke of infirmity. This purifying fire enters you. You can't see sinners and be normal. Something moves you to change them. You meet oppression, you deliver them. You don't see people under attack and you pretend. My son came out of a service on a Wednesday trying to cross Gudu. A, 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 a lorry crossed one girl. Her head spilled on the ground. And it was coming from a mantle after an anniversary. We will give man a mantle of, on a Wednesday after anniversary. He collected that man, Steve by name. He collected that mantle. He ran to the girl. Nobody wants to touch the girl because she's as good as dead. Lifeless on the ground. He gathered that broken head together. Look at the score. Look at look at the look at the white, the white uh, brains already outside. He gathered it, carried the mantle, and was tying it. Tied three mantles together. Tied the girl's head and began to speak in tongues. A purifying scent on fire. The girl sneezed. He carried her, put in the back of pickup of race road safety, and they rushed her to hospital. And that girl came back to life. Purifying sense. They have a commanding you breaking anointing. Anywhere you see them, they are the anointing on their life is a commanding anointing. It's a yoke breaking anointing. They operate the ministry of, of they operate the ministry of spiritual sharpness. They operate the ministry of spiritual sharpness. Anywhere they enter, when they meet people, they're shaping their destiny. Because the Holy Ghost is a sharpener. When it comes on you, you carry spiritual sharpness. Anywhere you enter, you sharpen people. You meet two believers in the parlor, by the time you finish with them, they are praying in tongues. Not gossip. When you begin to talk about revivers, begin to talk about the moves of God, they are set on fire. When you visit a brother, he stopped coming to church because you told him every evil of that church because you are Satan sponsored. We're talking about when you visit a sister in the office, by the time you leave her, she's praying one hour. Because when you spoke, you sharpen him. Iron sharpened, net iron. 
Not you read. You don't hear say. As Papa travel, as Mama travel, that elder, that CMC, that choir. That's why they hear. You know they hear say. You are a, you are an agent of bad news. You are demonically inspired to kill people's appetite for God. When they meet you, every desire for the man of God, every desire for the things of the spirit, dies. You are an agent of darkness. But when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you are a purifying sense. Anytime you meet people, they are not normal. They pray until they cannot stand. It's called fire. Balls of fire. That was the kind of believers I saw in the 80s. That was the kind of believers I saw in campuses. That was the kind of believers I saw. When they enter balls, they revive everywhere. The unit just, when they see us, they run. Those girls that dress naked, they take off. These people have come. On the spot. On the spot. They can't stand us. Half naked. They are coming. They start running. When they see us in the bus, they change the bus because you must be born again. You will hear the voice of thunder thundering. Po, 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 po. Sha, 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 Po, ra, ga, da, ga, da. Purifying sense. They have a yoke commanding anointing. When this Holy Ghost comes upon you, it will set you on fire. It will set you on fire. It will revive your bones. Everywhere you enter, you shape these people's destiny. Number six. The Holy Spirit does not only release a fire purifying sense. But number six, he seals up the believer. It's a sealing grace on the believer. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. The work of the Holy Ghost basically in this last day is for the glorifying of the body of the saints. He's working on us to purify, to glorify so that he works on us so that we will carry glorified body. And what is the exceeding greatness of it? Verse 13, 13. The Holy Ghost he works in the believer for the purifying and the glorification of their body. In whom also you trusted. After you have heard the word of truth. The gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that you have believed. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. It's called the spirit that quickens you and prepare your body. It's a glorified body. You carry the seal of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost marks you for heaven. Anyone that receives the Holy Ghost is carrying a seal for heaven. You can't backslide. You can't backslide. Some of us, if we backslide today, Satan will not accept us. Satan will refuse. If I say I'm backslidden, Satan will not agree. Will you say it's a lie. I came to spy. I'm a spy. Because I carry the seal of the Holy Ghost. When Peter entered, even a small girl noticed, you are different. You speak like one of the Galileans. I, did I not see you among them? And Peter denied. Peter denied. Peter denied. There are many of you, even if we throw you for hell, hell will tell you, say, we know one, take back. Because you are be sealed. That is why you go to a club, you just can't dance like them. Yes. Yes. Even if you stand on the road like a prostitute, something tells you, this is not you. You are drawing your skirt down. This is not, you are hiding. This is not you. This is not you. It's, you may not like what you are doing, but something pricks your heart. There is a seal over you. It's a seal for redemption. The Bible said they will not come except my father called them. And then Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30. He said, grieve not that spirit. Don't live anyhow with that spirit. 
Once you have that seal on you, do not live anyhow because that spirit sealed you unto the day of redemption. You were sealed. Grief not the Holy Spirit. Whereby you have been sealed unto the day of redemption. Unto the day of rapture. It's the Holy Ghost that will quicken you that day. The Bible said, well, we shall not all sleep. In a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, we shall be changed. We shall be transmogrified. Mortality shall wear immortality. Corruption shall wear incorruption. And we shall be taken. This Holy Ghost, don't joke with him. He's the one that will prepare you for heaven. That's why you must keep speaking and keep preparing. Because as I'm talking right now, he's preparing you with a glorified body. This body you are wearing will not see corruption no many days from now. Because you shall be changed. Can I talk to you, sir? If you walk with him to a point, your humanity will no longer be seen. Your divinity will become so visible. Your humanity will be swallowed by your divinity. That's why people like Kenehege will pray in tongues and they will leave their body. <laughs> the wife will have to come and be beating Kenehege to come back. Because when he speaks in tongues three hours, Kenehege leaves his body. And begins to float. The fugitives of the presence becomes heavy. The wife will keep beating him. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Don't give him the microphone. Let him come back. Come back. Because he will cross to that to another realm. He will just cross to eternity. Because at that place is fellowshipping with the celestial. That's why for 86 years he never drank Panadol. Because his body, his body has been glorified. Because he said, a body shall I give you to do the work of God. You can't have our kind of schedule and carry these natural bodies. To have our kind of schedule, you must trust God for a body. That is the body I'm wearing. That's why I said coronavirus cannot stay in my body. Because the Holy Ghost glorifies my body. And he said, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And if any man destroy this temple, him shall God destroy. That is the realm where arm robber enter house, they didn't see you. Because you are invisible. That's why when you carry money and keep person come to steal it, can't find it. You come back and you see the money. Because anything you touch becomes invisible. Anything you touch becomes invisible. invisible. You take poison, it becomes a Jinamoto. Because of the glorified body, you are sealed. You are not ordinary. You've been bought with a price. You've been sealed. You must be rapturable. It is an internal work of redemption. It is too late to go to hell. Pastor, I, I, I hear people say, I hear people say, save at last. What is that? Uh, Joseph, how do they used to say it? <laughs> Heaven and life. That is Baldadash. That is nonsense, ignorance. There's nothing like heaven at last. I am already in heaven, yeah. I am sure of heaven already because I am sealed unto the day of redemption. I am already in heaven. That's why I can walk in the cemetery 2 a.m. and see a ghost and tell him, oh boy, how are you? He too will say, fine, sir. And you pass. Because his spirit, you are spirit. And you are a spirit of the highest class. Of the highest class. That's why in 1986, I saw a massive ghost. I went to buy Dr. Abel Damina food. Came to my school. I went to buy him food. He was hungry. So I, that was around one. He landed from Zaria. He said, I'm hungry, Josh. Anything. I said, let me get you sardine or geisha and bread. Uh, let me go to the neighbor and knock at the kiosk. I took a young man by the name Sam. Follow me. We step out to go. It's a distance. The minute I step out, I saw a tall creature. Very tall. tall. I've never seen that kind of creature. He started coming towards me. Sonunku. Sonunku. Sam ran and hide behind me. He ran and hide behind me. He said, let's run. Let's run. I said, no running. There's no running. He's a spirit. I'm a spirit. He was coming. I too was coming. Sanunku, he was coming. From afar, I'm seeing him coming. I was coming. 
and I stretch my hand towards him. The angels that kept not their first estate. He reserved them in the bottomless pit until the day of judgment. Having spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them triumphant. Ah, you are not normal. You are not human. It's a realm in God. It is a Holy Ghost that quickened at you. The moment I approach the creature to touch it, it disappeared. You poof, evaporate. Some say my head is becoming big. I say head small. In the name of lay hands, be small. In the name of Jesus. He said, let's go back. I said, no. Geisha Saidin Wishabai. Makota Vepuja. No retreat, no surrender. Not the one you wake up in the night. You are hmm, you stand. You take an home, you stand. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hmm. He maketh me to lie down in greener pasture. He restored my soul. Surely goodness and mercy. No, my friend. <laughs> that is retreating. You are to refire. Why? Because I am sealed. That's why Satan cannot lay claims on you. You are sealed. You are sealed of the Holy Ghost. Satan have no price on your life. You, you have, that, that's why Paul said, henceforth, let no man, let no man trouble me. For I bear in my body the mark of Christ. Hit your neighbor say, I am marked. I am marked. I bear in my body. Walk glorify. Believe, say, if anything happens, you can disappear. We have seen it. How one girl disappear in Kinapas then and appear in area one after closing from an anointing service here. A Muslim girl. Help me preach this message. The Kinapa, the, 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 the one chance, they took her from area one before she knew she was after Kaduna. When she recovered, she saw her back by her side. She put and put the oil there. When they took her to the tent of den where they of ritual is where they kill her. Say, make your last prayer. She pulled out the anointing. God, I heard that man said, when the when, when the terrestrial fail, we should cross to the celestial. The God of Talena, I heard you said it. She poured the oil, step on the oil. She disappeared. She appeared in area one. The parents are people, Muslims, came here to look for her. They accused me that their daughter, they were seen last in this place. I said, if she enter here, she cannot be lost. Because she has been sealed. She came for, 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 for to be born again, that service. So she has been sealed unto the day of redemption. Oh, you have been sealed. Ephesians one thirteen said, you received the salvation. That is where your journey began. You, if you put it for me, Ephesians 1 and verse 13, you had a salvation. He said, who you trusted? After that, you heard the word of truth. The gospel of salvation. You became saved when you had that gospel. After that, you believed. The moment you believed, I, something came on you. It's called spiritual rubber stamp. Pow! You were sealed. You are no longer your own property. Somebody own you. Until he takes permission from God, he can't have you. Because you are hid in Christ. Christ in God. Let them tear God. Bring Christ. Tear Christ. Then they can get you. For you to have coronavirus is for Christ to have coronavirus. Satan! Give God coronavirus first. Give it to Jesus. Then you can touch me. God can carry corona. Jesus can carry corona. I don't know where you will find me. To give me corona. Because I am hid in Christ. And Christ. And in him. We live. And move. And have our being. If I am in the market, I am in him. If I am in the supermarket, I am in him. If I am in the office, I am in him. In him I live. When I'm going to the toilet, I'm urinating. In him I live and move and have my being. Wow. 
we are also his offsprings. We are the offshoot of, of divinity. We are the extension of divinity. We, if you see me, you see God. If you see me, you see Jesus. If you see me, you see divinity in operation. You see immortality at work. So where did Corona come from? I knew God was punishing China. Because in less than 10 years, they have killed over 10 million Christians. Have you heard any Nigerian preacher go to China as large as they like ministry? Yes. We like ministry. Have you seen any Nigerian ministry in China? Very few, I know. Because if they catch you, they will put detonator in your house and explode it. It's a communist country, they don't allow the gospel. They catch you, they will burn you alive. Why would evil start from there? First Corinthians chapter 12 verse 3 said, there is the work of the Holy Spirit as regards your salvation. When we receive Christ, we receive the workings of the Holy Spirit. He said, wherefore I give unto you understanding that no man speaking by the Spirit of God call it Jesus a curse. That no man can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. Simon by Jonah, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. But by my father which is in heaven. That's why when other religions say Jesus is not Christ, is not Lord, don't, 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 don't attack them. It has to be by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the revealer of Jesus. You can't say Jesus is Lord. You cannot enthrone the power of God. How else shall they know your God if you don't practicalize it? Virus can't stay in your body. It cannot. It is impossible. It possibly can't. And this Holy Ghost convicts us of righteousness, not of sin. John chapter 16 verse 8 convicts us of righteousness. He convicts the unbeliever of sin. But you, he convicts you of righteousness. Anytime you are lying, anytime he sees you on the bed of communication, he said, this is not you. This is not you. You are better than this. This is not you. You are better than this. This is not you. Not to condemn you, but to walk back into your righteousness. When he's come, he will reprove the world of sin and of what? Righteousness and of judgment. So it's the spirit of righteousness. I pray for somebody here. No, no, no. You didn't hear me. I said, I pray for somebody here. Wherever you are, receive the Holy Ghost. I don't like that. Amen. I say, receive the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout, I receive, I receive. I receive, I receive. Number eight in this service. What is the benefit of the Holy Ghost? He releases in us the love of God. We just become love personified. We have capacity to love the unlovable. We have capacity to pray for our enemies. As a woman can stay in a marriage of a loveless marriage. Because of the Holy Ghost. That's why a man... Can stay with a boss that is a Muslim and wicked. And yet is not moved because the Holy Ghost is with you. Romans chapter 5 and verse 3 to 5. It is easy to feel alone and feel unloved. Especially in these trying times. Affliction can make you question God's affection. In these last days. Your affliction, your pain can make you question God's affection. But with the Holy Ghost, nothing moves you. Whether in peril, in hunger or in nakedness. Nehi, in all of this. It does not change how you behave. All this, I'm tired. God didn't give me a husband. That's why I'm staying at home. My friend, you don't have the Holy Ghost. If you have the Holy Ghost, you come past things. You love him for him. Romans chapter 5 and verse 3. Put it for me quickly. Romans 5 and verse 3. Media. And not only so that, but we glory in tribulation also. Knowing that the tribulation work at what? Patience. And patient experience. And experience hope. Why? And hope make it not a shame. Why? Because. Why? Because. The love of God is shed abroad. In our hearts. By the Holy Ghost. Which is given unto us. That is why in tribulation we hope. 
in hope we don't give up we still stand on we still believed why because what is keeping us is not normal <laughs> no husband at that at 46 but you are still cheerful in the church because you are not living for husband you are living in him Somebody say a pastor will be buried, no child. He's still praying for other people to have children. And yet he's not losing sleep. Making others rich, may him serve his poor. Because the Holy Ghost is with him. He said we glory in tribulation. We are not downcasted. We are not reproached. We, we don't give up. We don't look like people that the whole world is on top of our head. We came here. I didn't even have transport to come here. Maybe that is your story. But you are still happy. Because that is not what makes you. My friend, without the love of God, hear me, your affliction will make you never to see the affection of God. The affection of God for your life. You will put the signboard of trouble on your head. Some people say, God, give me testimony before I join the choir. Yeah, there are many singing. Their testimony have not come. And many of them singing, they are still squatting. Because it's not what they are going through that is them. Mm -hmm. It is who he said they are that they are. Their condition does not define them. Yes, is somebody hearing what I'm saying here? That is why Romans chapter 8 and verse number 33. What shall we then say? If God, who shall lay charge to the, to the God's elect, it is God that justify it. Continue sir. To 34. Who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died. That is risen again. Who is at the right hand of God the Father? Who make an intercession for us? Continue sir. Verse 7. Who shall separate us? From the love of Christ. So the basis is the love. Shall tribulation. Distress. Persecution. Shall corona. corona. Virus. Separate you. Famine. Nakedness. No food. No hunger. I mean no food. Hunger. Sparrow. Sword. Verse 36. As it is written. For thy sake we have been killed all the day long. We have been accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Some of us. You watch us suffer like sheep to the slaughter. You made unbeliever mocked us. But the next verse say Nehi. With all of this attack, Nehi. Nehi means no, no. No, no. In all these things, one thing is sure we are more than this. Because we are more than conqueror through him that love us. Then verse 38 says, I am convinced, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. <laughs> Continue, sir. No height, no depth, no any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. We love him. Salary, no salary. We love him. We love him. We love him. Somebody told me. If you don't increase my salary, I won't play instrument. I say, don't play. Go. Go. First and foremost, we give you salary in God's house to appreciate you. Nobody can pay you. Only God can pay you. If you do it right, he will pay you before my eyes. He will pay you before my eyes. When Jimmy joined the church, I told him, God will pay you before my eyes. He was struggling to even pay rent. And now, almost finished building, buying another land. God pays. Otto has never collected salaries. But one Otto property alone was what made us got this land. One property. God is a rewarder. How can you follow me three years and you are still begging to feed? What kind of salvation did you got? Your heart 
is not right. That is your problem. Every day you will move rebellion. We no go agree. We no go agree. Increase, increase. We no go agree. Plaka. We no go agree. No, you are telling me your father who feed you with spiritual things. You no go agree. How did you manage to enter this church? How did you manage to enter this church? What was your arrival process? Because you came by the back door. If you are really hearing what I am teaching, it's not what is in your hand that makes you. It is who you are in Christ. Sometimes stand up. Make head in your room. Say, God, if you called me, if you called me, show yourself. I refuse to beg mortal man. Since I was born and now I'm old, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Challenge the throne of grace. Bring your strong reasons. Declare thou, no church is the reason why you are poor. See this, my son, is transforming every day. When he came, nothing. You will never hear Tony attack me. You will fight my enemies for me. Why won't he start rising? Why won't God begin things? A man received prophecy in two weeks, two properties, in millions. He woke up that morning, didn't know money would come. I must tell Jesus all of my trouble. I cannot bear this body's alone. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me. Jesus alone. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I cannot be this morning's alone. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me. Jesus. The love of God makes you to see divine affection instead of divine affliction, even in the midst of darkness. My friend, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you can't, hold, you can't hang on too long. You will give up. We have too many give up spirits today because they left the Holy Ghost. They are empty of the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 22 verse 33. Peter loved God so much. But his love crashed. Our love must be empowered by the Holy Ghost. Peter had a genuine love. Jesus, I will not allow you to die. Anybody that thought you would kill me first. Even he practicalized it. He used knife and cut one, one man's ear by the name Marcos. Jesus collected the ear put back. But when the cheeks were down and he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. That is what Peter told Jesus. And he said, I tell you the truth, Peter. The court shall crawl this day. Before that thou three times, you will deny that you don't know me. The man said, I'm entering prison with you. I will die with you. One man in this church said, Pastor, I'm the last man standing. Last man. Last man standing, Papa. Everybody can leave me and standing. Today, today, he carried, married man, he carried some, a daughter to another place. Last man became an immoral man. Last man left his Papa because of girlfriend. His love was tempered with. 
left wife and children. He's suffering now. Running from spiritual church to spiritual church. The other day they saw him in TB Joshua. I say, in problem never start. Nobody let Joshua. He will go places. I said the womb of that girl is short. Forever disgracing a father. Hear me, hear me, church. You can claim that you love the church, you love God, you love your pastor. When reality comes, oh, don't even trust yourself because even you can't trust yourself. You don't know yourself. Holy Spirit, I am happy with Jesus every day. I am happy with Jesus every day. Wait now, he got us looking at the shaky head. Say, when I. When I baptize this one with, with, with tribulation, I go clear. What have you left for the excellency of Jesus? What has the love of God done in your heart, in your life? What have you forsaken? Paul said, sometimes it is necessary, but it is a speed then for others that I let go certain things. Every day they see two of you in the back of a car. They are asking you, what are you people doing? It's an evil appearance. Stop it! For the love of Jesus' sake. So are you not moved when God is not glorified? We are not perfect, including the pastor. But we walk towards perfection. But why are you going from worse to worse? Why are you not changing for the good? Why don't you say, Lord, I can't run. They hold my leg for one step. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I am asking of you. Give me the strength. See, the people who wrote the hymns, they are genuine born again. If you see our hymns, they are scripturally wired. But today's uh, singers, I don't know what's wrong with you. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Where is he written hoo hoo in the Bible? I know that is Y and Z generation. I'm glad. My friend, add something now. Add some fire. See the young man, he's rapping, but he's rapping with pure fire. Fire. If I didn't hear anything, I was hearing pure fire, 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 fire from Talena, fire. That is good enough. Even mentioning my name, Satan is already not in that music. Matthew 26 and verse 69 to 74. The love of God helps you to subdue resistance. Makes you not to lose your core. And this love is powered and fired into your life by the Holy Ghost. 26, 69. Matthew 26, 69. Now Peter sat without the palace and a damsel came to him saying, <laughs> Thou are also with him. With this Jesus of Galilee. I saw you the other day. He denied before them all saying. I know not what you are talking about. What are you saying? Me. You saw me. Where? What are you saying? I don't know him. Continue sir. And when he was gone out into the porch. Another maid saw him. House girl. Maid. Saw Peter. <laughs> and he said to him. That were with there. This fellow is also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied with an oath. I do not know. I say, I never see that man. Me, where? Which clothes did I wear that day? Look at me very well. And after a while, came unto them that stood by and said to Peter, Surely you are one of them. For even the way you talk. Your speech has betrayed you. You talk like Jesus. Then he began to curse. May God punish your mama and your grandfather. Whoever is lying not told me, you know go better for you. You know go see this life. He began to curse and to swear, saying, I did not know the man. And immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the words of Jesus. He said, before the cock crew, thou shalt deny me thrice. 
he went out. He wept bitterly. He cried. Creating me a clean heart. I feel I missed you, God. I thought I was strong. But in the face of temptation, I bowed. I submitted to Satan so cheaply. I compromised. I went back to lesbianism again. He wept. That is true conviction. There is a difference between Peter and Judas. Judas went to hang himself. He didn't want. Because Judas thought if he sell Jesus, when they grab Jesus, Jesus will disappear. Because he has been disappearing before. The Bible says Jesus walked in the midst of them. So Peter saw Jesus as an instrument of business. See, I know they no go fear arrest this man. Ah, did you see the way Papa they talk? He looked like spirit. Jesus operated to a point that Peter believed that Jesus was a spirit. So he went and collect money and so Jesus said, "Go wait for that. He go appear for, go appear for the room. <laughs> Collected the money. <laughs> when they came for Jesus, they said how they wire Jesus loud, boozer. They slap and tap. Pow! He entered Judas and he said, "Ah!" He look at him. The man is still there. They wire him again. Pow! See, he no disappear. He saw them ridicule his savior. He broke. He carried their money. Say, I no do again. Take. Take. I no do again. I thought he would disappear. I no do again. Perverted heart. And he went to hang himself. Say, let me just die because they have carried him. They have crucified him. He saw the man bleeding. He said, so it is me. Then Jesus said, who is him? Who? The son of man shall be betrayed. Would have been better is not born. Ah, when Judah hear those words, he said, let me commit suicide. But Peter wept bitterly. The next time Jesus met him, he said, Peter, lovest thou me more than this? But before that, the Bible says he breathed on him the Holy Ghost. That was all. The love of God in his heart, bam, came alive. You need this love. That is a love that makes you come to church even when you don't have money. That is a love of God that makes you bypass every risk and still be committed to the cause of the kingdom. That is the love of God that makes you look at the man. You don't have money. You don't even know where your next food will come and tell him to hell. If you must sleep with me before you give me money, I would rather die of hunger. The lady is dying actually, but she chose to die than to be helped by another wicked means. Why not lift your hand and say, Holy Ghost, power your love in me. Power the love of Jesus. Because of my own, I don't even trust myself. Fill me with your love. Power me. Power me with your love. Power me with your love. Power me with your love. Set my soul on fire. Break forth, O oh, spirit of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, to the Lamb upon the throne. Sing loud, O oh, sense of the Most High God, cry out, Kadosh, to the Lamb upon the throne. Break forth, O oh Spirit of the deep, cry out, God, till the Lamb upon the throne. Break forth, O oh Spirit of the deep, cry out, God, till the mighty on the throne. Sing out, sing out, sing out, for oh, sense of most I Sing out, sing out, sing out, oh, sense of God most sing out, God, oh, to the Lamb Of God, empower 
pour the love of God in my heart. Steer your power. That is why I will sing in the choir and tomorrow I'm in the congregation. If the choir master makes me happy, I sing. The day it does not make me happy, I stay. The day power, Papa rebuke me, I leave the choir and sit back. You are not there for Papa. I can disgrace you any day, any time. I rebuke you because open rebuke is better than secret love. Then you told God, I have come past offense. What shall separate me from the love of God? Because you love him and your love is unseatable. That's why people can't understand you. Because you don't give up. Finally in this service. The Holy Spirit increases our evangelistic fire. The Holy Spirit fills our hearts with passions for souls. Anytime we come to church, empty seat moves us. Dying unbelievers moves us anytime we meet them. Our mother on the way to hell moves us. The flames of hell moves us. We will not allow sinners to go on touch without the world. Boldness for God to preach. Boldness to declare the word of God. Intensity is activated by the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 4 verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place where they were shook, where they assembled together shook, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spoke the word of God with what? With boldness. When the Holy Ghost is upon you, fear is lost. When you have the Holy Ghost, cowardice is lost. Cowardice is buried. When you have the Holy Ghost, sir, timidity is swallowed. It's swallowed up with rugged preaching. Swallowed with ruggedity. You become a dogged soul winner. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, a rugged soul winner is born. The mission of the Holy Spirit is to depopulate hell. That is why the Holy Ghost if he's not in a church, when the Holy Ghost is not advertised in a church, he leaves that church. And once the Holy Ghost leaves a church, newcomers are not promoted. Souls are not won. Any church where souls are not won, the Holy Ghost leaves. Anywhere they don't preach evangelism, Holy Ghost goes. Because he has no business with you until you become a soul winner. If we don't want the Holy Ghost to leave this church, we must be tirelessly preaching. Any church that does not win soul, the Holy Ghost will leave that church. It will become a religious center. The pastor will be preaching only doctrines and be he will become a motivational speaker. Most churches, the Holy Ghost is not there. The pastor is just a motivational, motivational speaker and the people are there as if they are gathering for comedians. A new church is when souls are won. How does the Holy Ghost empower us for soul winning? Number one, the Holy Ghost directs us to ready souls. Souls that are ready to be harvested. He will direct you. So if you are filled with the Holy Ghost and every time you pray, Holy Ghost, lead me to people to lead to Christ. It's very easy. He will always direct you to people that are ready for harvest. Because he's the one that, that harvests souls. That is why in Acts chapter 8 verse 29 to 37. The Holy Ghost directed Philip to the wilderness to meet with the Ethiopian eunuch. Because the man was ready for salvation. The Holy Ghost knew. So he directed Peter, Peter and uh, Philip to go and preach to him. Are you aware in Acts chapter 10 and verse 19 to 20. The whole, Acts 10, 19 to 20. The Holy Ghost directed Peter to Colonus. To give him salvation. Ready. If you are a friend of the Holy Ghost. He will lead you to people that are ready to be saved. He will lead you to friends that are tired of life. You will be shocked. Your friend will pick a call. 
patient. <laughs> I want to die, patient. <laughs> you say, hang on, I'm coming. That was the best time to lead her to Christ. That your friend that is sharp, shaking waist in the office. If you pray well, the Holy Ghost will grab her in a corner and tell you to lead her to Christ. Because he will give her a situation that she'll be helpless. That day she'll come with red eyes to the office. What is it? <laughs> he said, thank you, Holy Ghost. Another customer for heaven is here. Lord, give me the right words. You mustn't preach direct Jesus love you. You can start with fishermen. Start with the office. Show him how helpless he is in his condition. And show him who can be better to help his life. Have an Indian man. I didn't know how to lead him to Christ. Very rich. He has nothing less than 11 mopos as my neighbor. I started praying, Lord, show me how to talk to him about salvation. Bam! All immediately, Jonathan left. Buhari, Buhari entered. <laughs> the man knows thy fear. I didn't see one mopo. Everything changed. To parent was difficult. He came to me and said, Pastor, can your God do anything for me? I said, aha. Thank you, Jesus. Salvation is ready. A Hindu became a Christian. I'm praying for him. An army general was posted. He wasn't here with his wife. I was praying, Lord, how do I preach salvation? Bam! It happened. There was a woman who was with the presidency. My neighbor, if you see cars, if you see presidency cars if you see <laughs> anything they are doing if you see he locks upon he locks I say Lord move her one day she came here to the service God moved her nobody can see that woman I woke up that morning I told her I said where is that woman they say you can't see her she cannot be seen I said no I said Holy Ghost as I walk out let her also be coming out to meet me in the name of Jesus. I stepped out. See her entry. She left and knelt down to greet me. I spoke the word. Listen to me sir. Listen to me. The Holy Ghost is the best friend to lead people to God. Be friends with him. You will not struggle to win souls. You won't. Why do you need this Holy What does the Holy Ghost do to us in winning soul? He gives us supernatural utterance. He speaks through us to get sinners saved. When you speak, you speak with utterance. When you go by and ask yourself, now me talk like that. What does the Holy Ghost do to you in, in terms of evangelism? He helps you by pricking the heart of sinners to repent. In Acts chapter 2 verse 31, he breaks the heart of sinners. He makes them repent when they see Acts 2 31. <laughs> he seen this before spake of the resurrection of Christ. That his soul was not left in hell. 30, neither is corruption 37 I guess. Verse 37. 37. Now when they heard this. They were pricked in their heart. And said unto Peter to the rest of the apostles. Men and brethren what shall we do? Peter led them to Christ. 3,000 gave their heart to Christ. How does the Holy Ghost help us to do evangelism? By provoking signs and wonders. In John chapter 4, Peter, uh, Jesus operated prophecy. Madam, call me your husband. You say, I don't have a husband. You say, you are right. You really don't have a husband. Even the one you are staying is not your husband because you already married five times. Sir, I die a prophet. And she went and said, come and see a man who told me all. Bam. The whole Samaria gave their life to God, to Christ. Because the Holy Ghost will provoke one sign, one wonder. Tell God, give me one miracle that will shake this compound. That will shake this office. The Holy Ghost will come and slap your boss with coronavirus. Bam. Everybody's running from your boss. You call your boss. Sit down here. I want to serve you Holy Communion. Without putting anything in your nose. 
you chant in the Holy Ghost, give him bread. Chant the Holy Ghost, give him. Say, sir, go check. No, no corona. Don't you know that that boss will be will make you his advisor? But you, you have coro, coro what? Eh? <laughs> As you see me, so I die on this bed. We go die on this bed. Ah, bah, believer. God is using a means of evangelism for us. We are running. You are taking off. What is the benefit of allowing the Holy Ghost make you a soul winner? Number one, you are entitled to answer prayers. Isaiah 58 verse 9. Answers prayers. Your prayers will be answered like knife. Piercing through. Isaiah 58 verse 9. Then shall thou call and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry and he shall say, Here I am. And if thou take away from the midst of the, the yoke, the putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity. When you take away all this, say, uh, when you call, I will say, I am here. What do you want? Number two, you'll be entitled to supernatural addition of blessings. Matthew 6 33. The seek first his kingdom and all his righteousness, then every other thing shall be added. And number three, You'll be entitled to divine health. John chapter 15, verse 2 to 5. You'll be entitled to divine health. You begin to enjoy supernatural health like never before. Finally, finally. What does the Holy Ghost do? What is the benefit? He, oh, stand on your feet. My time is gone. Wave your hands. I'll continue on Wednesday. Stand up. <laughs>